Right you guys, in this video we're going to be seeing how to fix an SSD or hard drive not showing up in Windows 10. The first place to look to see whether your hard drive or SSD is detected is in your BIOS. You should see it detected here, whether it be an SSD, hard drive or whether it be an NVMe drive, it should be detected and it should be telling you what the drive is here. You can see it listed here as boot option 1 and it's my Kingston drive here, so it is recognized in the BIOS. Now, if yours is not recognized there, you need to check to see whether the drive has power and whether the SATA cables are plugged into the actual drive itself. Now, you can go inside the computer here, just make sure the SATA cable is plugged into the SSD, and also make sure it's plugged into the motherboard. And also make sure there's power going to the SSD as well. Now, if it's an NVMe drive, make sure it's seated correctly inside the motherboard uh, so it gets detected properly. And once you've done all those checks, you can move on to the next step. So we can see now this has all been done correctly. We're going to move on to the next step, which is download uh, Puppy Linux from the internet. Just type Puppy Linux and download the ISO file. Why do we need Puppy Linux or Linux to test our drive. Well, this is a good way to see whether there's a problem with your OS, which will be Windows. Maybe the Windows operating system is corrupted. And this way, if the drive is detected inside our Linux uh, version here, then basically what will happen is we know it's a problem with Windows. So go ahead and download Puppy Linux from their website. The reason why I'm using Puppy Linux is because it has the little drive icon on the desktop which tells me it's detected and it just means it's a lot easier for people that don't understand how to work Linux so it's a lot more easier for them to see. You can see the ISO is now coming down and once that is down we can move over to get Etcher. Etcher is just a, a piece of software that we can use to create our bootable uh, USB flash drive with our Puppy Linux on it. So download this and get this installed on the system. Now, if you skip this step, uh, you, you might have to do a bunch of other things to find out whether the drive is functional or not, or whether the uh, Windows operating system is corrupt. You could just go ahead and reinstall Windows if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and choose the flash file, which is going to be our puppy Linux here. That's now been detected and put into our list. Next one, we need to go select target. This will be our USB flash drive. So make sure you select the correct drive here. If you see show two hidden files here, be careful that these are our other drives. We don't want to tick those because it will wipe those drives. We don't want to do that. So select the USB flash drive only. And that's now done. You can see it's selected here. Now click flash. And this will go ahead and flash our USB flash drive with Puppy Linux. Now don't worry, it's not going to overwrite the windows install here we're just going to boot to it to see whether it detects the drive or not but just let that validate to make sure everything has gone okay and once we've done this we can close off this program now you can see that has been completed correctly we can take this off and plug it into our computer and then power on the computer and then you should get this screen here i'm going to press f12 to get to our boot menu here and i'm going to select uefi sandisk which is the usb flash drive that i'm using this will then boot to our Puppy Linux USB flash drive and start to load up the OS. So just let that go through its thing here. There's going to be a little bit of time taken here because it is booting to a USB flash drive. So be patient. You'll see some text coming up on the screen here. Don't worry about this. It's just loading what it needs to load. And once this is done, uh, we should get to uh, the desktop of Puppy Linux here. And what we're going to do here is just let this load up and then we'll continue with our test. Now, once it does get to the desktop, you should see a couple of icons down on the bottom left hand side, which is the drives that have been loaded up here. And you can see them here down on the bottom left hand corner. These have been loaded up and which means the drive have been detected here. So with that test done, you can see them here. With that test done, we know that the drive is functional here. Now, if you don't see your drive here, then there's an issue. And uh, it's either Windows that has caused the problem and you need to reinstall Windows, or the drive is faulty. So we're going to go to Disk Management here on a computer that we've got working. And you can see here, if the drive's not detected, you can also try this here. You can see it says 
unallocated. So it won't be uh, visible to Windows when it's in unallocated mode. So what we need to do here is click on this and create a new simple volume. So if you look inside here, you can see the drive is not visible. So to get that to be visible, we're going to right click on this and go new simple volume and click on this one here. Now you can also click on this one here and convert to GPT and that should now be converted to GPT. We can now click on this and basically create a new simple volume. Once this is done, the drive will then be visible to Windows. So let's go ahead and click next. And we go next again and next. And you can give it a volume label if you wish. I'm just going to skip all that part. And this is if you're using it here to be detected to see whether it's working correctly. So you can see the drive is now being formatted. And once that's finished formatting the drive, it should be ready for use. So we'll just let that finish off. And this is normally the case when it's a brand new drive. So we'll just let that finish off here. And there we go. The drive is now visible. And you can see here, we do see the drive here as drive E called new volume. You can change that name if you wish at any time. And you should see the drive is now visible. Okay, so now we can move on to some other things that we can try to get our drive to be visible and get it to work properly for us. So let's go on to the next step. So another thing you can try here is by going to the device manager. And if you see a bunch of exclamation marks or unknown devices or uninstalled drivers, or you can check the storage controller area or the disk area, you can check all those. And if they've got yellow exclamation marks, you need to go to the manufacturer's website of that motherboard and download all of the correct drivers for that particular motherboard. So the hard drive will be recognized. So go to the support area here and it will tell you the name and manufacturer name of the motherboard here. You can see this one's Tough Gaming X570 Plus. And if you don't know what your motherboard name is or what model number it is, you can go to the Windows operating system here. Let me just quickly show you and type in the search box system information. You should see it coming up here. Once you see it populate up the top, click on this. And in, inside the system information area, underneath the system summary, just click on system summary and you should see your motherboard and manufacturer name and model number right here and what uh, board version it is. All you need to do then is search for that particular model number and basically go to the manufacturer's website and download all of the drivers. So let's go ahead and do that right now so you can see how to do it. So we're going to go back to that website here. And we're going to go to where it says drivers and tools. Inside here, we need to select our operating system, which will be Windows 10 64 bit. And I'm going to now download the drivers here. So you can see LAN drivers, chipset drivers, audio drivers, all of the drivers you'll need uh, for your system. So just download all of these and install them onto your computer. And you can download them one at a time, or you can use their utility software and utility to do it for you if you're not familiar with that you can see it listed there in the list or you could just download them manually and install them so once you've got those downloaded you need to open these up and get them installed now also you'll find there is bioses on here and uh, if you're having still issues with it you may need to update your bios if there's an issue uh, which is for that particular drive sometimes flash in a bios can resolve this issue so check here for the model number. I never use beta BIOSes, but if you've got the model number here or version number, I should say, for that particular BIOS, you can then check it against the BIOS that you've got on your system. Now, if it's a new motherboard, it may be outdated and they may have released a bunch of fixes for particular hardware issues and things like that. So you can always update the BIOS. So check the version number here and then go to your BIOS and check the version number against the website's number to see how outdated it is. So once you're inside your BIOS here, go over to the top here and you can click through here until you get to this area where it says system information. You can see the uh, board name, model number, and also the version of BIOS here. And you can head over to the website and cross-reference that against theirs to see how outdated your BIOS is. Now to install all your drivers, you need to extract these and then you can install them. So basically download all the drivers 
and you can either drag, drag all the folders onto your desktop or sometimes it allows you to install them inside the zip folder like I'm doing here. If it doesn't allow you to do that, then you'll need to extract them and then install it. Once that's uh, opened up, you should see something like this. You can go ahead and install all of the drivers like so. It's that simple and click on the install button. And this will install all of the drivers for that board, which will then hopefully detect your drive. Now, Windows 10 is pretty good at detecting uh, drivers and downloading them, installing them during the update process. But if you've got uh, the internet turned off, sometimes it misses certain drivers out. Now, another thing you can do is use Crystal Disk Info to check the health of the drive to make sure the drive is in good working order. And you can see here the SSD is working perfectly fine. It says it's in good health. You can check the temperatures here and there's no uh, yellow or red uh, markers are coming up here to tell me there's problems with the drive. So I can generally think that the drive is in good working order. You can see the power on count is only four and the power on hours is zero, which means it's a brand new drive. So you can see the drive is detected here and we know the drive is working perfectly fine. So let's move on to the next thing that you can try here, which is downloading uh, Windows 10, because now you need to reinstall Windows and it's always best to use a nice fresh uh, version of Windows because this will be the very latest version and this will make sure that you haven't got any sort of corruption with uh, the installation media that you've downloaded previously. So go to their website and download the media creation tool and go through the motions here and create a brand new bootable USB media so you can reinstall Windows. Why do you need to reinstall Windows? Well, you do need to make sure that Windows is not corrupted in any way, shape or form to make sure that it's working correctly. So you can basically determine whether it's a hardware issue or whether it's a Windows issue. So now you can see here, we've checked it all of the right settings that we want here. And we're going to now plug in our USB flash drive and basically create a bootable USB flash drive. So let's go ahead and select the removable media and click next and this will go ahead and get things ready and this will download the very latest version and put this onto a usb flash drive we can then boot to that usb flash drive in the same method as we did before with puppy linux and basically reinstall windows so now we've booted to a usb flash drive with windows on it we're going to go ahead and click on install now and this will start up and get things ready for us so we can start to install windows you don't need a product key at this stage, so just you can say I don't have a product key and then choose the right version of Windows that you've got here, whether it be Windows 10 Home, Pro or Education or whatever version you've got. Select their uh, terms, conditions and accept this and then go to the next step. Click on custom install and you should see your brand new drive located here as unallocated space. If you see a bunch of information on here, you need to delete all of those partitions and then create a brand new one, or you can just click next if it says unallocated and away you go. So click okay here. We now have this ready to install. Make sure you select the right type of drive here and click next. Now, if you see a bunch of other drives on there and you're trying to install it on there, it's always advisable to unplug those when you're installing Windows, especially if you've got like two or three other drives, it can cause a lot of problems and you don't want to select the wrong drive and install Windows on one of those drives. So just unplug those and then you can plug them back in once you've finished installing Windows. Anyway, I hope this one helps you out. My name is Ben Brian from BrightTechComputers.co.uk. Big shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now.